Number 46. Methanol, H3COH, is used as the fuel in some race cars. Ethanol, C2H5OH, is used extensively as motor fuel in Brazil. Both methanol and ethanol produce CO2 and H2O when they burn. Write the chemical equations for these combustion reactions using Lewis structures instead of chemical formulas. Okay, so I think this one is another question where it kind of got slipped in when they converted the original chemistry uh, textbook from OpenStax to the Adams First chemistry textbook. We haven't done any chemical equations as yet, so you might be a little bit confused, but have no fear. Christina is here. So they're talking about combustion, right? And there's a standard formula for combustion. So if you don't know it by now, just write it up top here. I'm going to say that for combustion, there's four things that basically are going to be happening. You need a hydrocarbon and a hydrocarbon is just any compound that deals with carbon and hydrogen. So I just say CXHY because they can change. And hydrocarbons can have oxygens in there as well. It can have nitrogens, but the basic is that it has to have carbon and it has to have hydrogen. If you see in methanol, it has carbon and it has hydrogen. So that's a hydrocarbon. And then in ethanol, it has carbon and it has hydrogen as well. Both of them though are added oxygen, but that's totally okay. So you have to start with this hydrocarbon and I will write it down here, hydrocarbon. Hydro meaning hydrogen, carbon is carbon. So it will always be a hydrocarbon plus oxygen, O2. Remember, because oxygen is a diatomic. So whenever these burn in air, the air is oxygen. Now there's many different molecules in air, but the oxygen is what helps it burn. This will always produce the two compounds that they told you, CO2, carbon dioxide, and H2O. So that is a standard. So actually, I'll put CO2 first. So CO2 plus H2O. So this is the standard chemical equation for a combustion reaction. Now we just have to write this in terms of Lewis structures. So first, let's do it for methanol. So methanol, they told us, was H3COH. And it's burning in air because it's combusting. So it has to be plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. Now, they want this in the Lewis structure format and not the chemical equation, the chemical formula. So we just have to change all of this, right, all of these into actual Lewis structures. So, but it's good to actually write this down because... It's a good framework for what we're doing. So let's first draw out what methanol looks like. Now, especially with organic compounds and hydrocarbons, usually they will always write it from left to right. So in this type of notation, it seems that the th three hydrogens are all bound to a carbon, which would be bound to an oxygen, which in turn would be bound to a hydrogen. Do you see how that nicely flows? So I'm going to draw it just like that. The three hydrogens I'll put over here, H, H, and H, are all going to be bound to a carbon, which is bound to an oxygen, which is then bound to another hydrogen. So that's my blueprint for drawing hydrocarbons. Now, just like we do before, draw the valence electrons around each atom. Carbon had four valence, hydrogen has one, and oxygen has six. So draw those respective dots around each one. So each hydrogen should have one dot. So one, 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 and one over here. Um, the oxygen should have six. So just like that. And the carbon should have four. So one, two, three, and four. Now we make all single bonds, right? And then we check for the octet rule. So if I just draw this one and one bonds, one and one, one and one, this bonds with oxygen and this bonds with the hydrogen. Now remember, max, well not max, but hydrogen when bound would want to have two electrons. And if there was boron, it would want to have six, but there's no boron in this question, so we don't even have to worry about it. So for each hydrogen, each of these has two electrons because it's being shared. So all the hydrogens are okay. And the oxygen, if I look at that, has two, four, six, eight, so that's good. And this carbon has two, four, six, eight. So 
they're all good. So this is the correct drawing for this. Now we have to draw O2. So it's methanol plus, now we have to draw O2, where there's two oxygens, so one and one, right? And each oxygen has six valence electrons. So I'm going to just draw six dots around oxygen. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make the single bond first, so like that. And now check for the octet. This oxygen has two, four, six, seven electrons. That's not the octet. And the same thing for this one, two, four, six, seven. So eh, not good. So that's why you would have to make the multiple bonds. And in this case, you would double these up and now you have the octet. So this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons now. And the other one does as well. So this guy is good. Now, we have to make CO2 and H2O. Well, in terms of CO2, which one is the middle and which one is the outer element? Well, the least electronegative is always the middle. So carbon is less electronegative than oxygen because as you go from left to right, what happens to electronegativity? Electronegativity increases. That's your trend. So carbon would have to be in the middle surrounded by the two oxygens. And now we just draw the respective valence electrons. Carbon has four valence, oxygen has six. So you'll draw four and six around each atom. So carbon would have four. So let me just draw one, two, three, and four. And then oxygen has six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make single bonds and see if they have the octet. So one and one, one and one. Let's see, this oxygen has two, four, six, seven electrons. Uh -uh. This carbon has two, four, five, six electrons. Uh -uh. And this oxygen has two, four, six, seven. So they're all not happy. So that's when we have to make multiple bonds. One electron and one electron, and one electron and one electron to make two double bonds. And now look, this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Perfect. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. P perfect. And this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So we are good. So that's good for this one. And now we just got to worry on the H2O. So this is plus H2O. Who's in the middle? Well, remember, hydrogen can never, ever, ever be in the middle. So in this case, it's actually oxygen in the middle surrounded by two hydrogens. And I'll put the hydrogens down here. Each hydrogen has one valence, each oxygen has six, so put the respective dots around it. So hydrogen has one apiece, and oxygen has six, so I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. Make that single bond, one and one, one and one, and then check. Each hydrogen's happy because they both have two electrons and two electrons, so that's good. And the oxygen has two, four, six, eight, so we are good. Now, the only thing is that we have to balance it. Let's just check. And this is the law of conservation of matter. The amount of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens that are found on this side has to equal the number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens on this side. So let's see. There's one carbon on this side, and there's one carbon on this side. So that's awesome. Let's see if the hydrogens match. There's one two, three, four hydrogens on the left side, which is the reactant side. And if I scan, I only see two hydrogens here. So how would I be able to get to four, right? This side has four, this side only has two. So usually we would put a number in front of the H2O. What number would I have to put in order to get to four? This number has to be multiplied, right? That's how we will be doing balance equations probably in the next couple of chapters but I would put a two in front. So I would need two of these because two times two gives me the four. So technically there would be two of these actual compounds or you could just put a two in the front, that's fine. So I'm just going to erase that. And now let's just check the oxygens. Um, let's see, so there's one and two oxygens here 
But remember, now there's two oxygens coming from here. So there's a total of four total oxygens on this side. Now on this side, it's going to get a little hairy because on this side I have one, two, three oxygens. I have four oxygens on this side, and I have a total of three oxygens on this side. Now, here's where math comes into play. Treat this as a equal sign, and I know that I have to get to four, right? Total oxygens. There's one coming from this side, so that's one. There's a plus sign here, so plus. And with combustion reactions, you will always put a number next to O2 because then you won't have to change any hydrogens or carbons. So I'm going to say two times what, because we're trying to find this out. Two times what will get me four. And then you just sob. If you subtract one on both sides, you get two X equals three, divide by two, divide by two, and you get X equals three over two. So that would be going here or in this case over here. Now we can't always end off with fractions when we're doing balanced equations. So what's gonna happen is we always multiply the whole thing by the denominator and the denominator is two. So if we do that, I would need actually two of these compounds, two of the methanol, three over two times two would just be three and that's how we get rid of the fraction. Two times one CO2 is just two of them now. And now instead of two, I would actually need four. So that would be the balanced equation. So let me just write it up over here. This one, we would need two, just to show you both versions. There would be two, three, two, and four over here. Okay, so that gets rid of the methanol one. Now we have to do the ethanol one. So let's set it up first, and then we will write the Lewis structure. So ethanol is C2H5OH. It's combustion, so plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. Let me just erase this so that it, you don't get confused. Okay, now this, uh, this one is great because we already know what the compounds look like for this. We, the only thing that we need to know is how to write this one. Now remember, Hydrogen can never be in the middle. So it looks like these five hydrogens have to be bound spread out between two carbons. Those are kind of like your backbone. And if you've noticed, we have an OH here and an OH here. So it would kind of look the same like this. But the only difference is that we have two carbons to spread out five hydrogens instead of the one carbon with the three. So let's give it a shot two carbons. This we know is going to be the same thing, OH. And now I just need to put five hydrogens around the carbons, right? So I'll put one up top here, one down below here, one up top here, another one over here and down below. And there's five. Now, if we draw the valence electrons, one hydrogen for one electron for each hydrogen. So I'm just going to go around for the hydrogens and put one for one. Each carbon has four valence electrons, so four dots around each carbon. And then oxygen has six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we will bind single bonds. So one and one, one and one, one and one, one and one. And as we do this, all of the hydrogens are going to be perfect because they were going to have two electrons, so they're fine. Now let's look. This carbon now has two, four, six, eight electrons. Perfect, it's the octet. This carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons. Perfect, it's the octet. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons. It's great. And now we can just add along. So this one was the O2, and I'm just literally recreating what it would be up at the top because O2 will always look like this, just like CO2 will always look like this the two double bonds, and then oxygen, well, water, will always look like this. Now we just have to balance it. So let's start with carbon. In this case now, we have two carbon on the left side. Conservation of matter means that if I have two carbons on the left, 
I have to have two carbons on the right, but there's only one here, right? In CO2, there's only one. So I would have to double this up. I would have to put a two here, which means that I'll put a two here, which means that I have two carbon dioxide molecules. If I had to draw it out, I would just draw out two of them. Now let's check for the hydrogens. I have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens on the left side. So that means that I should have six on the right side. But on the right side, I only have two. So what number would I have to put in front of the H2O to get to six? It would be a three. And that means that I would put a three here. I would have three distinct water molecules if you drew three of them out. And now let's just go back to the oxygen. So on the right-hand side now, it looks like I have two times two, so I have four of these, so I have four oxygens because there's two times two here. And actually, let me draw it in blue to kind of get the different colors. And now over here, I have three oxygens, right? Because three times one, that's a total of seven. And there's the one here. So now let's just do it again, right? Because I want to put the number over here. Let's just figure out the math, right? This yield sign is really an equal sign, and this has to equal seven. There's one coming from here, so that would be one. There's a plus sign, plus two times something will get me seven. And now if you subtract one and subtract one, and I'll put it over here, two x equals six, divide that out, you actually need three O2s. So in this case, I don't need the fraction, but we had to do it, the math, to find out how many O2s we would need. But don't worry about if you can write the chemical formulas for now. Technically, we didn't even learn how to balance chemical equations in the Chemistry Atoms first textbook. So I think that's in chapter six or so. So we still have a couple more chapters, but hopefully this helped, all right? Just uh, learn how to get the Lewis structures down and you guys will be golden. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if this helped in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you like. If not, that's okay too. Um, we'll still be here for you guys. Thank you so much for the support and I will see you all in the next question. Have an awesome day.